In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to produce fissile fuel. What's going on YouTube? My name's Papa Oxy, and in this channel, we take hard aspects of modded Minecraft and we try to make them simple. Shout out to this guy for the video idea, and if you guys have anything you would like to be covered on this YouTube channel, then you can leave a comment down below letting me know. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into it. So at first glance, this can seem like a pretty daunting task, but luckily for you, I'm here to help you overcome that. As you can see, there's quite a wide array of machines that we're going to need to create fissile fuel. But after watching this tutorial, I guarantee you that you will be able to reproduce it on your own. So in the first part of the video, we're going to go over the actual process on making fissile fuel. And on the second part of the video, we are going to go over how to build the assembly and you can do so for yourself. You should note that this assembly is of my own design and there is no way, shape or form that this is what you have to use. And if you wish to do things your own way, that is perfectly okay. This video is designed to help you see the process on how to create fissile fuel. It is not designed as a perfect creation. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we have here so you guys can get started. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is the thermal evaporation chamber. Now, this step is completely up to you. I have it here because I like this process a lot more than just skipping it. And let me explain to you why that is. So we use the thermal evaporation chamber to produce brine, which then will produce chlorine and we can use the chlorine to produce hydrogen chloride. The hydrogen chloride can be combined with gunpowder to produce sulfur dust. This is where you need to decide what you want because sulfur dust can be mined inside of caves. Therefore, all you have to do is turn it into dust, which completely negates why we made the thermal evaporation chamber. Now, that being said, there are two resources that we can gain from the thermal evaporation chamber that we can use elsewhere. The first electrolytic separator that takes on the brine will produce sodium. Sodium is the best coolant for reactors for mechanism. So unless you want to use water, I highly recommend that you produce sodium. Now the other electrolytic separator that produces hydrogen also produces oxygen, which we need oxygen for a machine in this assembly line. So in my eyes, there's really no disadvantage to using this thermal evaporation chamber but that's completely up to you and I'll leave it up to you as that is. Okay, so now that we got that over, let's continue the assembly line. So once we have our sulfur dust, we are gonna put it inside of a chemical. The chemical oxidizer will then turn the sulfur dust into a gas, which is sulfur dioxide. We will pump that into another chemical infuser where we will take the chemical infuser and oxygen and produce sulfur trioxide. Now you can see here with this electrolytic separator, I have it piped at the side for the oxygen and the oxygen is being pumped into the back of this chemical infuser here. Now, once this chemical infuser has produced its sulfur trioxide, we will pump that into yet another chemical infuser where we will be producing sulfuric acid. Now to produce sulfuric acid, we need to combine the sulfur trioxide with water vapor. And we get water vapor by using a water source pumped into a rotary condensator, and once the rotary condensator has done its process it turns it into water vapor and we can pipe that into the side of a chemical infuser. Now once we have the sulfuric acid we can pump it into a chemical dissolution chamber where we will be combining fluorite which you can also find in mines and the sulfuric acid to produce hydrofluoric acid. Once we have our hydrofluoric acid, we go ahead and pump it into yet another chemical infuser, but this is where things get a little bit different. This chemical infuser will also take on another process that we have to do on the other side. So over here, we have an enrichment chamber and a chemical oxidizer. The enrichment chamber will accept uranium to create yellow cake uranium, which will then be pumped into a chemical oxidizer, which will turn it into a uranium oxide. The uranium oxide combines with the hydrofluoric acid to make uranium hexafluoride inside of this chemical infuser. From this chemical infuser, we can pump the uranium hexafluoride into a isotopic centrifuge, which will then produce fissile fuel. All right, so that was simple enough, right? <laughs> I bet it wasn't. So not only are we just gonna talk about this, we are also gonna go to another side of this exhibit and we are gonna build this whole thing so you guys can see the process I took to build this setup. Okay, so here we are in our other exhibit. And we're gonna look inside of this chest and I'm gonna show you all of the resources you will need. Before we talk about that, you can go ahead and decide if you wanna use the thermal evaporation chamber. We are gonna build it anyways, just to cover that step. Other than that, you will need two electrolytic separators. You will need four chemical infusers, one chemical injection chamber, two chemical oxidizers, one rotary condensator, one chemical dissolution chamber, one enrichment chamber, one isotopic centrifuge. 
If you choose to go with the thermal evaporation chamber, you will need 33 thermal evaporation blocks. You will need three thermal evaporation valves and one thermal evaporation controller. On the right side, you will see our renewable resources. We need uranium, we need fluorite. And if you choose to use the process of the thermal evaporation chamber, gunpowder, but otherwise sulfur dust. As for pipes, we're gonna need all of them. The amount that you need may vary depending on your situation. To heat up our thermal evaporation chamber, we will be using a resistive heater using RF. You will need two sinks for unlimited water sources. You'll need some storage containers. You will also need a configurator to configure the pipe work. And on the bottom right here, you'll see that we have some upgrade cards. These are completely up to you, but I highly recommend that you use them as much as you can. We also have a quantum entangle reporter. Uh, this is also optional. I'm just using this for ease. So if you want to just pipe out with your fissile fuel straight into the reactor itself, then you can do that. But otherwise, this is optional. Okay, so first thing we're going to build is a thermal evaporation chamber. But before we do that, you guys can see here that I have some holes in the ground. This is just for pipe work for me and to make things simpler and the video goes smoother. I just went ahead and pre-cut all the holes that I'm going to need for pipes. Also, you guys can see here that I have some pressurized tubing already placed down. This is connected to our mechanism reactor, and this will be eventually connected to the oxygen we'll be producing from this system. Okay, so let's go ahead and build our thermal evaporation chamber. Okay, then we'll place down our controller here. We need two thermal evaporation valves on the left side and then we need one on the right side. There we can see that it completed with its little redstone particle effect. Also, you should note too that these can be extended upwards. 33 blocks is just the minimum amount you will need for this. Okay, so next step is getting water and heat to produce brine for inside of the thermal evaporation valve. First, we will do heat and we'll place down our thermal, our resistive heater, sorry. And then we will place down an energy source to start producing heat inside of this. Then we will take a thermodynamic conductor and pipe it directly into this thermal evaporation valve. Next, we're going to take our sink and we will place it down below the other thermal evaporation valve and connect a mechanical pipe inside of that. We will then need to take our configurator and select pole on the sink side to start pumping water inside of the chamber. Now you can see with our heat and water combined, we are producing brine, which is perfect. Next step we're gonna take is we're gonna come back out of the sink below with some mechanical pipes, and we are gonna select pull on the bottom of this as well, and you can see it's starting to fill up with water. We will pipe underneath the thermal evaporation chamber, and we will come straight up like this. Okay, for the next step, we will need another energy source. We will need two electrolytic separators and one chemical infuser. We will also need some universal cables and some pressurized tubing and one more mechanical pipe. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is place down our power source, which we will put right behind this mechanical pipe. We'll take two universal cable or three universal cables and place them down like this. And then we'll take a electrolytic separator and place it right below this thermal evaporation valve. Then we can take our chemical infuser and place it directly in front of the electrolytic separator. Then we'll take our last electrolytic separator and place it on top of the ultimate mechanical pipe, making sure for it to face towards the thermal evaporation chamber. We'll also need to place one more cable here to power up this electrolytic separator as well. Now you can see this one's already producing hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is already being pumped into this chemical infuser. Now all we have to do is combine chlorine into this. To do so, we will take a mechanical pipe and pump it into the thermal evaporation valve. We'll take our configurator and select pull, so it will take the brine from the chamber and put it inside of this electrolytic separator. And as you can see, it's starting to produce sodium and chlorine. We then need to take the chlorine with a pressurized tube, come out of the right side and put it inside of the chemical infuser. And as you can see here, it's already producing hydrogen chloride. Okay, so the next step we are going to take is to start producing sulfur dust from the hydrogen chloride that we're going to be making out of this chemical infuser. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and place down all of the electrical pipes that we are going to need for each one of these machines. So I'm just going to do that really quick and I'll get back to you. Okay, so now that we have our electrical pipes placed, we're going to go ahead and start producing sulfur dust. 
So we will take our chemical injection chamber and place it one block in front of the chemical infuser. We will then take a pressurized tube and we are gonna pipe the hydrogen chloride inside of the chemical injection chamber. We will then place a barrel or whatever chest you wanna use right behind the chemical injection chamber one block above. We will then take a logistical transporter, pump it into the bottom of that like that. Then we'll take our configurator and select pull on the spruce barrel side of this. And then we can place our gunpowder inside and it's still not pulling it in so we need to go into the configurations and just make sure that this back side here where the logistical transporter is coming in is selected to input now as you can see the gunpowder is being placed inside of the chemical injection chamber where it will combine with the hydrogen chloride to make sulfur okay so the next step is producing sulfur dioxide which we'll be using a chemical oxidizer to do so we'll place the chemical oxidizer one block to the right of the chemical injection chamber we will take a logistical transporter, put them between the two machines, and make sure this is set to pull. There you can see the item just went into the chemical oxidizer, which will then start to produce sulfur dioxide. Now, if you want to skip this step, you can do the same thing as the gunpowder. Just place a barrel below or above the chemical oxidizer, put a logistical pipe there, make sure this is set to pull. And if you look inside here, we also need to set the configurations to the back of it to put input. Oh, it would help if you put the uh, sulfur dust inside of the chest. There you go, so this is completely full of sulfur dust, perfect. Okay, so the next step is sulfur trioxide, which we will be using a chemical infuser to do. We'll place that one block to the right of our chemical oxidizer. We will then place a pressurized tube between the two. And as you can see, this is now getting sulfur dioxide. Now we need to combine this sulfur dioxide with oxygen. Luckily, we've already been producing oxygen with this electrolytic separator. So all we have to do is pipe from here to the back of this machine. Okay, so now that we have our pipe here, we need to make sure that this oxygen is actually going to get pumped into the chemical infuser. As you can see, it's not connected. That's an easy fix. All we have to do is come to our configurations, go to gases, and make sure that it's selected to the second input, which is brown. There you can see the oxygen is now inside of the machine and is producing sulfur trioxide. Okay, so the next step is creating sulfuric acid. We will need two machines for this, another chemical infuser and a rotary condensator. We will take our chemical infuser, place it backwards like this. We will then put a rotary condensator facing forward one block above the chemical infuser. Then we can take a pressurized tube and make sure these are connected like this. We can then take an unlimited water source and place it one block above or however you want to do this. And then we can take a mechanical pipe, make sure that this is selected to pull so this can actually start getting water to produce water vapor. Before it will start producing water vapor though, we need to click inside of the machine, come to the top left where it says toggle operation and click that to configure it to the other way around. Now it has water and it will start producing water vapor. Now water vapor is a gas, so we need to configure it to get it to pump it out into the chemical infuser by going into the side configurations, gases, and on the bottom we want to select output. Now we can see that it's in the pressurized tube, but it's not going into the machine. Same setup, we go to the configuration, gases, and where it says front, we want to select input. There we go. Now you can see we're getting water vapor. Now that we have our water vapor inside of this chemical infuser, we need to get our sulfur trioxide into this machine as well. Okay, so I just configured it and now you can see that it has sulfur trioxide and water vapor and we are producing sulfuric acid. Okay, now that we have our sulfuric acid, we need to produce hydrofluoric acid. To do that, we will be using a chemical dissolution chamber, which we will place one block to the right. This will have to be fed with fluorite, which you can find in mines. We will put a chest behind it like this. Make sure that our mechanical pipe is select to pull. We will inject our fluorite to the, the barrel itself and then come inside of this solution chamber and make sure that it is set to input. Okay, so we have our fluorite in there. Now we get, need to get the sulfuric acid into it as well. And as you can see, it's still not configured correctly, so we'll have to do that once again. Now, when configuring this setup, you want to make sure you can you pump out the right chemical. You want to pump out the sulfuric acid. So this color in the middle is blue. So if you go to your side configuration and you go to gases, on the left side, since this machine is backwards, we want to make sure we select output blue. 
Here you can see that the sulfuric acid is now gone and is being pumped inside of this chemical, the solution chamber. Okay, so now that we have our hydrofluoric acid, we need to start producing uranium hexafluoride. Now we need to place down our last chemical infuser directly to the right of the chemical dissolution chamber. We'll place down our pressurized tube between the two and configure it correctly. Okay, now that we have our uranium infuser with hydrofluoric acid, we now need to pump uranium oxide inside of this machine as well. To do so, we will need an enrichment chamber to the far right, and then we will put an, our last chemical oxidizer here in the middle. Between the chemical oxidizer and the enrichment chamber, we need to place down a logistical transporter, and between this chemical infuser and the oxidizer, we need to place down a pressurized tube. Once again, we'll have to configure it in the back side to make sure it is selected to input. As you can see, we are getting uranium inside, which will produce a yellow cake uranium item. Now that we have our yellow cake uranium, we need to go ahead and select pole on this side with our configurator, come into our chemical oxidizer, and make sure this is set to input. Okay, so now we're getting our yellow cake uranium, which will then produce uranium oxide. Now we have this tube here, it's not connected properly, so once again, we'll have to come to our configurations and make sure we go to gases and select output. Okay, so you can see that the pipe's connected and it is now being pumped into the chemical infuser where it will be producing uranium hexafluoride. This is the last chemical we will need to create to produce fissile fuel. Okay, so the last step is actually producing the fissile fuel, which we'll be using an isotopic centrifuge to do so place it directly in front like this. You can do this however you want, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. We'll place a pressurized tube between the two of them. And as you can see, we are already producing fissile fuel. Oh yeah, we also need to make sure that this is getting power as well. That was my bad. <laughs> okay, now that we have our integral porter here, we need to go inside and set a anchor for it. So we will type in our fissile fuel here. Oops, if I can spell it correctly. There we go. <laughs> And then we can click this check mark on the right side. And then you can see here that it has the fissile fuel created by me. This should already have connected. And then if you look in right there, it says fissile fuel. Perfect. Then we can come to our other side of the reactor. We already have an integral porter here set up. We'll place our tube going into the fission reactor port. We'll come inside of our integral porter and we'll click on the fissile fuel created by me and press set. And I think we might have to use our configurator to select pole on this. And yeah, there it goes. You can see right there, our fission reactor is now receiving fissile fuel. Like I was saying earlier, guys, I would highly recommend using these upgrade cards. These are amazing and they make the efficiency of this process go way quicker and a lot better for you. The only thing you need to look out for is the speed cards require a lot more energy than normal. That's why you want to use energy cards to kind of counteract that. But if uh, energy cards right here. <laughs> well, I forgot to hook up the sodium to our machine here, so the reactor actually blew up, but that's OK. All right, guys, that's the end of this tutorial. If it helped you out in any ways, please let me know down in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you guys would like for me to cover any other mods, then you can let me know down in the comments as well. I always like to do them as fast as possible. It's kind of challenging and fun for me. So if it would benefit you in any way, just let me know down in the comments and I might make a video on it. Thanks for watching. Bye.